up? It's Richie here with Statifying Football. This is week three for the um, NFL, for the NFL uh, Sunday games. I did the Thursday night game with my other videos earlier. So we'll just start right here. Sunday, Washington football team against the Buffalo Bills. Washington won 30-29 against the New York Giants. Taylor Heineke, 336 passing, two touchdowns and one pick. Terry McLaurin, 11 catches, 107 and a touchdown. They had 407 yards of offense. Four sacks defensively. The Bills did whatever they wanted against Miami. 35 to nothing. Josh Allen, 179 passing, two touchdowns and a pick. Um, defensively, they had six sacks and three turnovers in that game. I think this could be a pretty close game, and I'm going to go with the Bills in the end. Um, I mean, both defenses are pretty good. I still don't trust Josh Allen. I really like Taylor Heineke. I kind of want to, I think the Bills are favored. Yeah, they're favored by seven and a half. I'm going to put them on an upset alert, but I'm still going to go with the Bills to win. Chicago and Cleveland. Chicago had a nice win against Cincinnati, 20-17. to Andy Dalton, 9 of 11, 56 yards, a touchdown. He got hurt. Justin Fields came in, was a rookie, 6 of 13, 60 yards a pick, and ran for 31 rushing yards. Defensively, that's what won in the game. They had four sacks, four turnovers, and had an interception return for a touchdown. Cleveland beat Houston 31-21. Baker Mayfield was fine, 213, one touchdown, one pick, and one rushing. This could be a pretty close game just because Chicago's defense is good, but I think Cleveland, um, partially with their running game, should be able to hold it off and win, win that one. Baltimore and Detroit. Baltimore had an awesome win against Kansas City, 36-35. They were down 35-24 to at one point, I think, in the fourth quarter. Um, Jason Owe for Baltimore. Casey had the ball with a minute 22 left. He away, knocked the ball out of the running back's hand. They they and recovered it. KC had three timeouts. Baltimore ran for it, ran, ran, and then a fourth and one ran, and Lamar Jackson got it, and they won 36-35. It was a great ending. Lamar Jackson, 239 passing, one touchdown. He did throw the two interceptions, though, but he ran for 107 and two touchdowns. Marquise Brown, six catches, 113 and a touchdown. They had 481 yards of offense. They didn't have a fumble return for a touchdown in that game. Detroit kind of came back to earth. They lost to the Green Bay 35-17. Jared Goff, 246 passing, two touchdowns, one pick, plus 46 rushing yards. Baltimore's defense isn't as, as good. They had the great play that, that helped them win the game, but they're not as good as people thought they would be. This could be a high-scoring game, but I think Lamar Jackson would be too much for Detroit to handle. All right, Indiana Annapolis Colts and the Tennessee Titans. Indiana Annapolis, they had a close game against the Rams. They lost 27-24. Carson Wentz. Uh, yeah, 247, one touchdown, one pick. My Michael Pittman Jr., eight catches, 123, and they had a fumble return for a touchdown there. Tennessee had a nice win against a really good comeback win against Seattle in overtime, 33-30. to Ryan Tannehill, 347 passing. It was all about Derrick Henry, 182 rushing yards and three rushing touchdowns. Julio Jones, six catches, 128. They had 532 yards of offense. Again, this could... Indianapolis is kind of a sleeper team in my mind. This could be close. Tennessee, we'll see how they are. But I'll say Tennessee should be able to get Derrick Henry going a little bit and win. But I think it'll be a pretty close uh, a, a close game. All right, the Chargers and the K Kansas City Chiefs. Chargers, they lost the three-point loss to Dallas, 20-17. to Justin Herbert, 338 passing, one touchdown, two picks. Keenan Allen, four catches, 108. Kansas City lost that nail-biter against Baltimore, 36-35. Pat Mahomes, 343, three touchdowns and a pick. Travis Kelsey, seven catches, 109 and a touchdown. They had an interception return for a touchdown there. Tyreek Hill was pretty much bracketed, which is partially why they weren't, I mean, for KC, weren't able to even do more. I think KC will be the one that bounces back in this game and gets a win over the Chargers. All right, the New Orleans Saints and the Patriots. Hey, Saints fans, how that, how's that roller coaster going? They lost 26 to seven to Carolina. Winston was all Winstoning. He was 11 of 22 for 111 yards and two interceptions there. They had 128 total yards and two turnovers. 128 total yards was the least amount of yards the Saints have had since 2001. Their six first downs were the least first downs they've had since 1997. And they have Jameis Winston. New England, they had a, a you know they beat the Jets twenty five to six. Mac Jones was efficient enough, one eighty six passing. It was their defense though that forced four turnovers and had four sacks in that game. 
this will be an interesting game. It'll be a good uh, Patriots defense against uh, an allegedly good Saints offense. I Winston is one of those guys. One like last week, five touchdowns. This week, fifty percent and two picks. We don't know what we're gonna get from him. I'm gonna go with New England here. I'm gonna say their defense will will hold down Jameis Winston. So I'm gonna Patriots getting the victory. Are right, the Atlanta Falcons and the Giants? Atlanta. They got killed by Tampa Bay, 48 to 25. They were down 28 to 10. They kind of came back and then sucked some more. Matt Ryan, 300 passing yards, two touchdowns, three interceptions in that game. Giants, awesome game against Washington. They did. They lost by a one point, 30 to 29. But Daniel Jones had a great game, 249 passing, one touchdown, plus 95 rushing yards and a touchdown. Atlanta looks like crap this year. The Giants don't look much better, but they at least look like they have a quarterback. I'm gonna go with the Giants winning there. Cincinnati and Pittsburgh, a big division game. Cincinnati lost to Chicago 20-17. to Joe Burrow, 207 passing, two touchdowns. He threw three interceptions on three consecutive passes in that game to turn it over four times. Pittsburgh lost 26-17 uh, to the Las Vegas Raiders. Ben Roethlisberger, 295 passing, one touchdown, one pick. Deontay, John Deontay Johnson had nine catches, 105 in that game. He got hurt at the very end of the game. We'll see if he plays there. I think Pittsburgh, though, will be the one that bounces back. And gets a, a big uh, division game win there. All right, Arizona and Jacksonville. Arizona, they beat Minnesota thirty-four to thirty-three. Kyler, Kyler Murray may be the MVP of this of the year. He's playing like it through the first two game games. He's playing like he's trying to win another Heisman in the NFL. He passed for four hundred yards, three touchdowns. Did did throw two picks, and he ran for thirty-one more in a touchdown. Rondell Moore seven catches, one fourteen in a touchdown. Touchdown that four hundred seventy. Four total yards of offense. Jacksonville, they lost 23 to 13 in Denver. Trevor Lawrence is pretty kind of bad. 14 of 33, 118, one touchdown, two picks. They only had 189 total yards in that game. I think Arizona, with the way Colomer is playing, I think they, they destroy uh, Jacksonville. At the New York Jets in Denver, the Jets did not look again good, did not look like anything against the Patriots. They lost 25 to 6. Zach Wilson, 210 through four interceptions in that game. Denver, they're 2-0. They had they beat Jacksonville 23 to 13. Teddy Bridgewater looks pretty good. 328, two touchdowns. Cortland Sutton, nine catches, 159. They only allowed 189 total yards in that game. Against the Jets, I think Denver's defense, they should be able to, to mess with Zach Wilson uh, again there. So I think Denver moves to 3 0. Miami Dolphins and the Vegas Raiders. Miami got killed by the Bills, 35 to nothing. Jacoby Brissett came in because Tua got hurt, passed for 169 in a pick. They had three turnovers in that game. Las Vegas looked pretty good against Pittsburgh, 26 to 17. Derek Carr, 382 passing, two touchdowns. Henry Ruggs, five catches, 113 and a touchdown. They had 425 total yards of offense. I think Vegas keeps it going <clears throat> against the Bills and should be be able to win. All right, probably the game of the weekend, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Los Angeles Rams. The Bucs had a big win against Atlanta, 48-25. to Tom Brady, 276 passing, five touchdown passes. Defensively, they had forced three turnovers. Mike Edwards, the safety, had two interceptions returned for a touchdown. The Rams, they won a very really close game against the Indianapolis Colts, 27-24. Matt Stafford, 278 passing, two touchdowns at a pick. Cooper Cup, nine catches, 163 yards, and two touchdowns. This will be a really, really close game. The Bucks secondary, they, uh, it, they're having some troubles in this game. The Rams, I think Stafford, I like Goff. I liked Goff with the Rams, but Stafford is another kind of talent. They have all the receivers. They have a really good offense there with the Rams. This could be a shootout. I mean, I'm a Bucks fan. I'm trying not to be biased. I'm gonna give it edge just to Brady. To, I mean, I mean, this very realistically could come down to a field goal, touchdown at the end, and those situations I trust the uh, I trust Brady. So I'm gonna go Bucks and a really, really close, close win. I mean, that yeah, the line is Tampa Bay by one and a half, and that that's about what I think will happen. Seattle and Minnesota. Seattle, they lost in overtime to Tennessee, 33-30. Russell Wilson, 343 passing, two touchdowns. Tyler Lockett, eight catches, 178 and a touchdown. Minnesota, they lost. They missed a, a field goal at the end. <clears throat> they, lo they lost by a point to Arizona, 34-33. Kirk Cousins, 244 passing and three touchdowns. Dalvin Cook ran for 131. 
Defensively, Daniel Hunter had three sacks there, and they had an interception return for a touchdown. This could be a shootout, could be back and forth. Minnesota's played their first two games really, really close. <coughs> um, I, I'm going to say Seattle gets the slight edge here again. Unfortunately, another heartbreaker for Minnesota. So I got Seattle winning that. The Sunday night, Sunday night game should be a pretty good one. Green Bay and San Francisco. Green Bay, they bounced back. They had a nice win against Detroit, 35-17. to Aaron Rodgers, 255 passing, four touchdowns. <clears throat> Devontae Adams, eight catches, 121. Running back Aaron Jones, he caught three touchdowns and ran for one himself. San Francisco looked pretty good, at least defensively, against Philadelphia, 117-11. to Jimmy Garoppolo, 189 passing, one touchdown and one pick. This will be a really, really interesting game. Good defense with San Francisco against a good offense with Green Bay. Uh, Green Bay's defense is fine. San Francisco's offense, San Francisco's offense is is. We'll see if they can what if Debo Samuel's can get going. See what they can do. I'm kind of leaning to towards Green Bay in this one, but they got to go to San Francisco. So I'm gonna go with San Fran in the end. But this is gonna be a really fun game. I think a really close game, of course, all the a lot of NFL games are, but I think I'm gonna go with San Francisco in the end to win. And the Monday night game, a big NFC East battle against the Philadelphia Eagles, uh, with the Philadelphia Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys. Philly lost 17 to 11 at 11 at San Francisco. Jalen Hurts 190 passing plus 82 rushing and a touchdown. Kez Watkins two catches, 117 yards in that game. Dallas had a close win against the Chargers, 20 to 17. Dak. 237, but but did throw an interception. Tony uh, Tony Pollard ran for 109 and a touchdown, and they had 198 rushing yards. I think this will be a close game, of course, again. But I think Dallas. I think um, I think Dallas will just. I think Dallas is a good team. They'll win maybe by a field goal at the end in that one. So those are my picks for week three of the NFL games. Peace.